Rappers and producers, I got presented another great topic this week on CurtisKingBeats.com slash Curspiration from Kevin Harper. Now, I'm not going to read the full thing right now because this is the introduction, but basically Kevin Harper wants to know, you know, how do you strike the balance between being comfortable in your home studio versus a professional studio and sort of how do you get your ideas out there, even ask some networking questions. I'll get to this long-winded question when we get back from the break. Rappers and producers, specifically rappers, Kevin Harper said, I know I'm a dope artist. I have no insecurities. But recording in studios is tough and a lot different from my at-home studio. I'm comfortable at home. I have a, he names a bunch of different equipment, currently running off a garage band. I understand the engineering and Pro Tools is what makes it sound good. I went to an actual studio to record a song I'm trying to push. Now, I'm a perfectionist. I record it until I have it right, but that gets expensive. I'm sure it does. The song isn't to my expectations, but it sounds good enough. A lot of artists make hit records from home, Pro Tools being the biggest part of it. I realize I need a team, engineer, a publisher, and a manager, but I have no luck networking. What should I do? Kevin Harper, I know why you're confused because you got a lot going on right here. And I think a lot of things you want to accomplish, they're all things that you can accomplish, but you gotta, you're trying to bite off more than you can chew. One of my favorite quotes is, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right now, you're trying to eat the whole elephant tusk, the elephant head, the ear, everything. You're trying to destroy this. And I, and I, I, um, I respect your energy and wanting to get after it. Um, even when you said no insecurity, we all got insecurities, my mans. Come on, let's just be real about it. Let's address that stuff first of all. First of all, let's get to the nitty gritty of your question. I don't think the nitty gritty of your question is getting a publisher or getting a manager. I think that's, that is a question that you have legitimately, but I think right now the biggest thing seems to be that you are focusing a lot of your efforts on developing yourself as an artist. You've already done things like you've invested into your own equipment in much the same way that I did. I invested into my equipment. I bought everything. First, I started at Walmart, and then I graduated to Garage, uh, uh, sorry, Guitar Center. But I invested into everything. I had my own headphones. I had everything that I thought I needed to make better music. I went from the PlayStation to a computer to, you know, getting different software that I felt like could help develop me. And I was at home, and I was knocking stuff out. Here's the thing about it. I could afford equipment, but I couldn't necessarily afford to buy studio time, which I think initially helped me out a, a whole lot. And I tell you that because I see stories all the time of people, of artists that I consult with that tell me, you know, I'm spending so much time in the studio that I'm paying for. And I, I look at it and I'm like, God, that budget would be better suited towards your promotional efforts or better suited towards promotional items like stickers and things that can really get your name out there and really get you know you more traction on the stuff that you already have it would be better suited especially with the technology and the way things are now for you to have some kind of a home studio setup and really just get to know yourself there in that environment a lot of artists like to jump into the big studios first because it makes them feel you know uh, 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 it makes them feel official but really what they're doing is they're purchasing with their ego at that point at that point they're getting into the big studio because they're like man this is what Lil Wayne was in a studio like this or you know I want to be part of it and I understand the need to want to do that but not even the need but the want to want to do that because what you need to do is make sure that you're growing what you need to do is make sure that you're you're in an environment that allows you to grow without pressure of having to, you know, having the pressure of, of I have to grow within this four hour time span because somebody else gets to dictate how much time I can spend in here and I got to pay them these, this amount of money. It's way too many um, distractions going on for you to have a healthy environment to grow in. Will you always have a healthy environment? No. But I think that when you're at home and you know your environment, just like you have Kevin Harper, you have your own environment, you got your own space, your own computer, you are in an environment where you are able to 
put together ideas that maybe you wouldn't have had the budget or the time to do in a major studio. Now, I understand the need to want to make a hit song. Look, a hit song is relative to whoever is listening to it. It's relative to the viewer. It's, it's about perspective of what a hit song is. Now, to you, you may say, you know, these hit songs are because of, you know, having, I think you said it was because of Pro Tools, and I, that's not what a hit song, hit songs have been created on FL Studio. Hit, that, that, a hit is a hit. To, everybody has a different definition. Do not wrap yourself into thinking that you need to have these certain things for a hit song. That's not what you should be going after. I think what you should be focusing on, it seems that you want to grow. It seems that you want to be a self-starter. It seems that you have no problem investing in yourself. By all means, continue to invest into yourself. But I think that you're better suited investing into your own environment. Why? Because you control that environment. Why? Because there's no fee for you to work on stuff in your own environment. When you're in your own studio, one of the benefits I had with having my own studio early on, and it wasn't a, it was like a little rinky dink studio, but the benefit I had was that I got to experiment with my voice in ways that I would have been too insecure about or I would have felt too much pressure to experiment with because I'm on the clock and I'm paying somebody else to basically utilize their space and their time as an engineer. So that's for starters. Don't get so wrapped up in thinking I have to have Pro Tools. I have to have a manager. I have to know what you have to do right now is grow your product. Your product is the most important thing to you. You have to grow yourself in the process as well. Growing yourself is growing your product. You got to focus in on what you already have and how you can improve these things. And when 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 what you need becomes so high or, you know, you you outgrow your environment transition somewhere else then start taking that money and utilizing studio time but if you have money right now and you're able to invest in the studio time i would invest that into your own studio space because like i said you can control your environment you make your own hours you get to determine you know when you record how often you record how many takes you do when you're dealing sometimes with a studio you have to wait on them on their timing because they're still running a business to stop what they're doing come back to your files, send you the file, email you the files. You got to go back when you're finally done and really get sort of your masters when everything is completed after your last payment. You just got to go through this process that if you had everything right here and there, you'd be able to control a lot of it. You know, it's funny when you hear a rapper like Russ talk about the control that he has over his music, it's because he has his hands on everything. He knows Pro Tools. He knows how to make a beat. He knows how to record himself. He knows how to, you know, uh, edit it himself to where he wants, he knows what he needs. So one major benefit of that, of knowing what you need and spending so much time with yourself, and you may be asking, well, how much time should I be spending recording to myself? Like I said, until you feel like you outgrow your environment. You know, and, and if you can continue to invest into new things that make your environment feel uh, uh, relative to where your growth is at, continue to do that. Because eventually you're going to invest so much to where you're going to need a space, you know. But if you get to the point where you say, you know what, I've been doing all this stuff myself. Maybe I just need an engineer before you need a studio. You know, hit songs are not just created. It don't have to be in a major studio. Use me as an example. I had the, my project, the Jubilee Year EP, was recorded in a bedroom in Rialto, California. A bedroom. You know, literally that office that I used to do all my perspirations out of was in that room. Every song was recorded on FL Studio with, with uh, my, my boy, oh gosh, Leotis. You know, you, you want to say something as a hit song? What is a hit song to you? Is it a song that's on the radio? Is it, is it something that is big as Cardi B's, you know, Bodak Yellow? Is that the kind of hit song that you think that you're capable of right now? Because you got to understand, a hit song, quote unquote, a hit song nowadays, all it really is, it's, it, yes, it does begin with the music. But what happens is somebody along the way has a budget or has a machine behind this content and they are able to get this into different people who are able to create content for them. Everybody from uh, uh, radio interviews who have video content that they can share about the song. Everybody from uh, meme creators, people who create memes. It's a whole other business in itself right now. Somebody creates a meme for this particular song and then it goes virally on the internet. People start sharing it. 
you know, there's a whole system behind it, even when you're talking about getting it to certain radio stations. And, you know, if is your song something where it would be great in the urban playlist, the urban uh, radio playlist, or is it something that will go into, into a more mainstream playlist? These are factors that you're going to have to factor in when you talk about a hit song. What are you talking about? Are you talking about a song that, you know, if you haven't had a song that has 100 plays yet, stop worrying about a hit song. You need to worry about a song that's going to get more than 100 plays the next go around. You know, you need to stop putting so much, so much attention on one piece of content and obsessing on it before it even gets out there. Here's the thing about it. You'll know your hit song when you put it out there. Because you can sit up there with your boys, everybody in the studio like, yo, this is the one, this is the one. And you put it out there and it gets 5,000 views, maybe 7,000 views after some paid promotion. Then what? Is it not a hit no more? You know, then you put out a song where you're like, ah, I like it. Let's see what it does. And then it has 25,000 plays. Is it a hit then? Don't go hit chasing. I think hit chasing is the, the, the quickest way to depression. It's the quickest way to, you know, not really tallying up your wins in the most appropriate way that you should. You know, you're not focusing on growing if, you, if you're hit chasing. Focus on, I put this song out. It had this amount of metrics, plays, views, likes, shares, focus on that first and then say, okay, how can I get something even more than that? What work from that? What can I take from that? What can I improve that model upon? Take that and then keep going. You know, I, I talked about Russ earlier because Russ is a great example of somebody who said, you know, I'm not sitting up here hit chasing. One of these is going to take off. I just got to continue to create content on a regular basis and continue to provide it until people, they, they just got to know about me. First, they're annoyed. Then they're like, oh my God, here he is again. And then finally, they may hear one song. And they're like, well, I like that one song by him. That probably was created based upon multiple projects, multiple songs that created that momentum. But you're never going to show up trying to get one song to do the momentum. Because what's going to happen is that one song that comes out the gate, that's a hit song that you think. You're going to have to follow it up with something else. And if what you have is not, uh, 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 if it's not of the same level or caliber, or if you don't have enough music to support that, you have wasted all that money, all that time, and paid that another studio just to be a one-hit wonder. So my suggestion is to use this. If you do not have Pro Tools, do not worry about Pro Tools. You'll get that in time. If you have a studio situation with all that equipment you line up, really great equipment, continue to record. You know, don't worry about, you know, chasing hits. Like F a hit right now. What you need right now is to continue to grow and continue to create content. You're not a you're not a, a machine. The model of record labels being machines that, you know, create these. That's not the model as it is anymore. Now what you are, you are a content creator. You just happen to use the vehicle of music as your content creation. So focus in on creating more content and then creating content around the content. Behind the scenes videos, breakdown videos of your songs, breakdown videos of your lyrics, uh, uh, studio tours, telling people how your recording process is, showing them a behind the scenes of a song that you created, figuring out all this different content, going to genius.com and, and, and annotating your lyrics, getting your fans to annotate your lyrics. These are things you should be worrying about in your pursuit of having something possibly go viral. Don't worry about that. You trying to facilitate that. And if you don't have enough money to actually push behind something and make something viral, you're wasting your time. So focus back in. And yes, there's people who have done it, but the percentage is very low. Focus your energy on building a business that is going to be here for a long time and not just a fly by the night, one hit wonder here, and then you're gone in 15 minutes. That is my best advice to you. When it comes to finding people to network with, I'm gonna tell you this. As I became better at my craft, I attracted people who were of the same caliber of skill. And in turn, it attracted people who were of a caliber of business that could support the quality of my music. Focus in on your content first, and you'll start to attract the people that need to be around you. Some will be good, some will be bad. But focus on your content. Focus on your fan base. The power is not in the hands of a manager or a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you think you said publisher or, or whatever you're trying to get to. 
The power is in your hands if you learn how to grow your audience and create content. Because that's what it always comes down to. It's just those two factors. Once again, it's another perspiration. Dude, you need some more of this juice? Please subscribe to the channel below. Be a part of the notification game. Thank you to everybody that is part of the Curtis King community. If you would like to be a part of the Curtis King community, go to curtiskingbeats.com backslash membership. Be a part of the one percentile of rapper noirs and producer noirs who are seeking more. And to come back to this topic, you know, share some of your input rappers and producers with Kevin Harper because this is a very common you know, a uh, problem. This, a lot of people go through this, and if not every rapper goes through this at some point in time, where they're trying to figure out, you know, I'm a perfectionist. How do I? Where should I be spending my time at? Should I be investing into a major studio, or should I be at home creating my music? Give them your advice. I'm not the only one with the answers. In this life, you would not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. Curtis King, Curtis King, Beats I can't listen to you. When I listen to you, it's a liability. Cause you be mentally killing my inner energy So I'm concealing my feelings before you injure me I can't listen to you